So we started doing some free throw percentage problems in the last video, so let's continue. So in, in the first time I said, well, if I have an 80% free throw percentage, what are my chances of getting three free throws in a row? And I said, well, it's 51.2% chance. Well, let's, let's do another scenario with, and let's just assume that my free throw percentage stays at 80%. And let's say that, um, I don't know, let's say there are, there are two, uh, that let's say my team is two points behind. I'm making this up on the fly, so we're two points behind. Two points. Uh, no, let's say we're one point behind. One point behind. We're one point behind. And I'm up at the free throw line, and I want to say, what what is the chance? And let's say I have. Um, Three free throws. So you know, someone fouled me when I was shooting a three-pointer. So we're one point behind. There's one second left. One second left. And right when I was going to take the winning free throw, or not the winning free throw, the the winning three-point shot, someone fouls me. So I get three free throws. So I get three free throws. And once again, I have an 80% free throw percentage. My actual percentage is probably something more like. Twenty percent. But anyway, I have three free throws. So my question is, what are our chances of winning? What is the probability of my team winning? Winning, not tying. Winning. So in order to win, well, actually, let's let's do the the tying first. So what's the probability of tying? Tying. Or tie? How do you spell tie? Tying. Okay. What's the probability of a tie? What's the probability of tie? Well, the probability of a tie is going to be equal to the probability of me getting at least one, at least, at least one free throw, right? And you may say, oh, well, now I have to say, okay, that's the probability of getting. Um, exactly one times the probability of getting two out of three times uh, plus the probability of getting uh, three out of three, but like we saw in I think it was either the last video or the video before, that is identically equal to the probability, or let's say one minus the probability of not getting any free throws, not getting any free throws, right? The, if you know, it's the the probability of getting at least one is essentially the probability of me not missing all three, right? Hopefully that makes some sense. So let me erase all this stuff that I did up on top, and we can figure out the answer to this problem. So let me erase all of this. Let me erase all of that. Erase that. Let me erase this. We know I have an 80% probability of making any one shot. So if we go back to the problem, what is, so this is my free throw percentage, free throw percentage. So what is the probability of me not making any shots, not making any of my free throws? Well, my probability of not making one free throw is 20%, right? 20% chance of not making any free throws. Or not making any, you know, say I take a shot, I have a 20% of not, not, no basket. Or not making the free three throw. So if I'm taking three shots, the ch shot of I miss all three is going to be equal to 20% times 20% times 20%. Right? And that equals what? This 0.2 times 0.2 is 0.2. 04 times 0.2, right? And then let's see, what's 0.04 times 0.02? Let's see, that'll be a 8. And I have 1, 2, 3 numbers behind the digits, place. It's 1, 2, 3. So 0 0.008. So I have a 0 0.008 chance of missing all of the free throws, right? Or another way you could uh, view this is this is equal to. Right, a percentage is just this times 100, so there's a 0.8% chance of missing all of the free throws. Or another way of viewing this is I have, so what's my chance of making at least one? Well, it's going to be 1 minus this. 
So what's 1 minus point, this is a 0, point zero, zero 0.008. Well, it's 99.2%, right? Yeah, that's 99.2%, right, 99.2% chance. Or you could also view it as 0 0.992. Right, you take one minus this, you get 0.992, which is the same thing as 99.2% chance. So I have a 99.2% chance of at least tying the game. So it's pretty high if you have someone at the free throw line with a with a 80% free throw percentage and they have three shots. Now what if I only had two shots? Let's say I got fouled when I was taking a two pointer and I only have two shots. Well, in that case, um, in order to tie the game, I have to get at least one, but I only have two shots. So it would be 1 minus the chances of me missing both shots. And what's the chances of missing two shots? Well, the chance of missing two shots in a row I have a four per, is 4%, right? 20% times 20%. So 4% chance of missing two shots, two in a row. So my probability of getting at least one, assuming that I am taking two shots is going to be 1 minus this. So I have a 96% probability of at least one shot if I take two. So that's also pretty high. And of course, what's my probability if I only have one shot? Well, it's 80%. So, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of framework next time you watch a basketball game and you can pause your TiVo and figure out the probability at, you know, when, when the person is making that last clutch shot. And it could be a, an interesting experiment for you. Anyway, so let's. And actually, actually, I was thinking an interesting scientific experiment, or maybe you know, a, a, a high school science project. You know, people have a free throw percentage, and and that kind of implies that every time someone takes a free throw, that those are mutually exclusive events, that they are independent of the previous time, like we said with coins. But an interesting idea, you know, in in, in basketball, people always say, you know, he's hot now, or he has a streak, and so there is this notion, and I know I felt it, that there are times that your probability increases or decreases, and it tends to be may be dependent on whether you made or missed your previous shot. So one thing you might want to, this is, a, I think, a legitimate science project, is to either get the data um, from real NBA players and see if, if the, they really are mutually exclusive events, if, if the probability of making a, the, the next shot or the next free throw really is independent of, of whether they made or missed the, the previous one, or whether it actually is dependent. Or if you don't have all the data from you know the NBA or wherever, although I, th I suspect you could find it, you could try it with yourself and your friends. Or you know maybe since you want to be unbiased, you'll do it with your friend. You'll see if if the probability of them making the next free throw really is independent of whether they made the last one. Anyway, that actually I think that could be quite quite good, and you can get quite involved in uh, in the analysis. So let's let me finish this up with another scenario. We talked about free throws. We talked about flipping a coin. And now I'll talk about dice, because that is really another area where, um, well, it, it's one interesting, and you'll probably see some problems uh, on probability. So in, in general, when you're playing games of with involving dice, it's always interesting to say, you know, what's the probability if I have two six-sided dice, what's my probability of getting, I don't know, a particular number? Let's say, what's the probability of getting a 7? So to think about that, you have to say, well, what has to happen to for the dice for me to get a 7? And I think here it might be interesting to draw a bit of a grid. So let's say that's my grid. Let me split it up into 6. So let's see, that's splitting it up into 1, into 2. And each of these need to be split up into 3. So it'll be like that. It won't be perfect, but close. Uh, like that. Like that, and like that, and let me split this. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. Actually, I didn't want to do that. Well, that's good enough. Let's do this, this. I'm trying to make it a six by six. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is because let's let's make this top this top axis this horizontal. Um, each of the the situations I can get on the first dice. Right. Although I'm going to roll them simultaneously. Although it's, it doesn't matter if I roll them simultaneously or one after the other. Or I roll one dice, one after the other. So in this first dice, I could get one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So this is dice one, d1. And on the second dice, I could get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And this is dice two. And I'm running out of time, so I will see.